Perfect. Well, morning marketplace. I'm pretty excited to be here today. Um, in the first place, because to see, because we get to see everyone in person. Um, I joined Modicon. I think was it last year, Ruth? The first one, the first, the global. Yeah, yeah, that, that was awesome already. But just to, to see everyone here in person is even better. Um, before I start, I just do a quick introduction. It's kind of funny because, like yesterday and today, I got the, the question a few times, like, "How are you involved with Monic? How are you using Monic?" It's actually a pretty funny story. Um, I started using Monic at the end of 2019 when I introduced it to one of my customers. Um, I was building a lot of uh, hybrid apps, uh, online portals, basically linking a lot of um, different apps together to get something very productive for my customers. And Monic was one of those tools I was using. And I actually got very open source, um, but also a whole community around it. Got me very excited. Uh, project. And now here we are. Um, I did more than 200 contributions and did their features. Uh, but it's been a fun, a fun journey. Um, and nowadays I'm actually working as a content engineer at Leap Energy, which is a startup that focuses on decarbonizing the grid, uh, mostly in the United States. But I'm still working for Monic in my free time, um, working on some things like the marketplace. So um, without further ado, let's uh, let's get started. Um, before we dive into the actual marketplace, I want to give you a bit of background on the plugin system in Monic. We've already seen some great examples of plugins today. Um, a lot of the integrations we see are focused on CRM or CMS systems. So typically, to get leads in your system. Either you want to import them from your CRM system or have a web form on your website so you can capture leads, for example. Um, we're also seeing a lot of integrations with email providers, SMS providers, uh, the Deutsche Post as well, sending, uh, sending physical letters. I think it's a very exciting feature to have as well. Um, there's also plugins that extend functionalities, like um, there's a plugin that extends the custom field integration, especially on large-scale installations uh, to really help scale users. There's just so many things you can do with the plugins for Monic to extend the platform. But until now, it's been quite cumbersome to install and update all those plugins. You would have to go into your server, upload the plugin bundle, activate it. Um, it, it really wasn't as easy as like putting an app on your phone. And that's really what we're trying to do with the marketplace initiative actually to make that a lot easier. So that's a bit of background on this whole initiative. This has been a long time coming. Actually, it started already at the end of 2019, where John, who is also in the audience, basically made a proof of concept for the marketplace. Um, there were some issues there, mostly technical issues, to actually uh, have a proper integration with Composer. Like installing a plugin back then was, was pretty slow. Um, it's not necessarily a problem that it's slow, but we also have some technical uh, issues, like challenges there, because, because some servers literally say, like, if your script is running longer than 30 seconds, we just block it off as it stops. And that's really not the experience you want to have for, for end users. So at the end of 2020, a strategic initiative was announced, and that's where we really started to focus on, like, okay, we have this marketplace thing, and we really want, want to make it happen now. Um, for that to happen, we needed two things. We needed Composer support. So Composer, for those of you who don't know, is basically a package manager for PHP. So it allows you to have basically anything you can imagine um, in your apps or plugins or whatever you're building. Um, they released a new version, Composer 2, which we needed to integrate into Modic. Um, and that, thank you so much for that. And um, he's been working with Rahul, I think, right, to get some PRs merged into, into Core. That was a massive undertaking, and that is here now. So, Monix a major, major step for the marketplace. We currently have a read only version, so you can see plugins, but you cannot install them yet. And today, I'm very excited to announce that we'll soon be able to actually install plugins through the marketplace. Yay! It's finally happening. Um, we're aiming for a release at the end of this month with Monic 4.1. Um, I saw Roots roadmap, which was pretty ambitious, but I think this is also pretty ambitious to get done. So, 
the more contributors we have across the board, the better. So if you know someone who could contribute within your company or friends or whoever might be interested, just uh, please bring them on board. We need everyone to uh, really step up our game to speed things up a bit. Um, what does the marketplace actually mean for Monic users? So first of all, you can get more out of Monic. We just saw it in the survey results as well. We really appreciate the extensibility of Monic. There's so so many things you can actually do with it. Like we actually the stuff we have today, we cannot even imagine what will be possible in the future. Um, so really, the sky is the limit there. Um, for Monic users, it's very important to have a single plugin catalog because if we look at our support channels like the forums or Slack, we very often see the question, where do I actually find plugins and how do I install them? That's what the challenge is up to now. So with this marketplace, there's actually a single place for people to find plugins, so it's very exciting. And of course, you want fast and secure installation of plugins. So currently, like I just mentioned, you have to just upload a bundle and then activate it. But it's not guaranteed that, that the plugin will still be working across modic updates. Um, so that's a major challenge we're hoping to tackle with the marketplace as well. Um, the thing is, we're just about to launch the marketplace. But what if we would allow everyone to upload any plugin there? It could become quite a mess uh, in terms of reliability, Security, there's so many things we can run into. Um, for those of you who are familiar with WordPress, it is very easy to use to actually install plugins, but there's also some problems like you could break your installation, and that's what we really wanted to prevent here. So, what we're going to do is to start launching the uh, marketplace with an allow list. Now, what does an allow list mean? It's basically a list of plugins that we know um, work with Monic, especially with Monic 4. Some of the plugins that are out there in the open are not compatible with Monic 4 yet. Um, so that would be the first step to really ensure that we launch something that is stable. As, I mean, as stable as we can get it for a first version. Um, we're also considering to have some sort of automatic, uh, automatic validator moving forward. Now, what does that mean? We know a few technical areas that are absolutely critical for a plugin to function. So if there's some typos in your in your namespaces in the bundle or in the folder names, it could break the whole plugin and potentially the mod as well. And these things uh, could typically be checked by an automatic, automatic validator. So you could just uh, put your, your plugin through it and it will check if it's compatible with Monic. So that's something uh, we're aiming to uh, provide soon as well. But just to get started quickly, we'll start with the allow list. Um, there's also a thing that a lot of hosting providers will very likely be asking, like, how do I prevent my users from just installing everything? Can I sort of provide my own list of plugins that I want to make available? Yes, that will be possible. Um, it will also be possible to work the other way around. So you can still allow your users to install basically any plugin, but then work with a blog list. So if there's a few plugins that you know you don't want your customers to install, you can do that as well. Um, I'll get in a bit more detail about the, the hosting provider perspective in a second. But before we do, let's see an actual live demo. And I know live demos are always a bit tricky to do, um, so but we should be good here. So basically we have Monix dashboard here, um, which should be familiar for most of you. On the right hand side we have the marketplace. This has been here since Monix 4.0, which was released end of August. So the, the menu entry is already there. Um, currently, we basically have a very basic list of uh, all plugins that are available. We're planning to have some, uh, um, I think, around Q2 next year. Uh, but this should really help us to get started uh, quite easily. So let's say I have a, a plugin here, which is called Hello World Bundle. I will literally be able to just click install and it will do just that. So I don't need to log into any server, I don't need to upload anything, um, everything is done for me. So now the plugin is installed. And if you've ever worked with plugins before, um, this is the plugin page, which is also available here through the menu. So the plugins page. And now you can see we have a new plugin here, which is called Hello World. So this plugin basically doesn't do anything, but it shows you how easy it is to start installing plugins now. 
Um, so you can install the plugins through the UI, uh, which is for a lot of people very easy to use. But if you just like working with the command line, sure, you can do that as well. Um, before I show that, let me show, show that you can actually remove plugins here as well. So I'm once again going to the Hello World bundle, and I can remove it from here as well. So now it's gone, and I'll show you now how, what it looks like on the command line. There's a little life hack here that I always use. If you just enter PHP page slash console, you will see all the available CLI commands. If you look here, you see modding marketplace. Uh, we added install in this case and remove. So this allows you to install a specific plugin. So I'm just going to do modding marketplace install. And then it basically does the same uh, what the UI is doing. So let's just wait for a few seconds and it should, should show up here as well. So here's the Hello World bundle. Um, it's in the plugins folder, so everything is just taken care of. You don't need to worry about anything. So that is working as well. Um, so we looked into the UI installation and the CLI installation. Um, so this should really make it a lot easier for users to start installing plugins. Uh, and this is only just the beginning. Like, if you have any ideas for the interface, the way of working, or the available plugins, uh, feel free to share them with us. At the end of the presentation, I'll share a link where you can join the conversation. Um, because there, I can imagine there's going to be so many questions and ideas uh, popping up now. Um, let's go back here. So, what does the marketplace mean for plugin developers? Um, so we're using Composer, which for uh, developers is actually very handy because there's so many libraries out there. I think there's tens of thousands of PHP libraries available nowadays. So you can literally just leverage them and uh, start using them in your plugins. And we actually use Composer for installing and updating the plugin. Thank you very much for making that happen. Um, secondly, fast protecting a command line Comment in a second, which is going to make it really easy for you to get started to have visibility. Because until now, it's been kind of challenging to actually promote your plugin. I heard some people here talking about some plugins they really love, so you have word of mouth, but there's no single place where you can actually find all the plugins. There are a few community um, initiatives, I think, for popular plugins. But now it's going to be really easy for plugin developers to promote their plugin uh, within the marketplace. So let's look at creating a plugin from scratch. So to be honest, when I started working on Modic, I was quite confused on how to create a plugin. And we're really trying to make this whole process a bit smoother by having proper documentation and also a getting started procedure for plugin developers. So what we did is we added a command line uh, command, which is called modding plugins create. And this will allow you to create a plugin from scratch. So let's see what it looks like. So it will basically ask me, like, what will be the name of your new bundle? So let's say the demo bundle. Um, at some point, you're going to be publishing your plugin somewhere. And we use packages, a uh, repository for composer libraries. So I'm just uh, going to call it like my name and then demo bundle. Uh, short description for the plugin, let's just say test. So basically what it's doing now is just generating a plugin for us. So we don't need to worry about where and which folder do I need to put my plugin. I need to clear the cache. Now all that stuff you don't have to do anymore because we do it for you. So here you see there is a demo bundle now and everything is taken care of. So here's the bundle name, um, here is the, the actual full bundle name that we use in Monic, and here it uses the bundle name as well. And this is only just the beginning, because we're planning to provide some first, uh, let's, say, let's say, getting started package. So we're actually going to add some things to the UI, to the command line, so plugin developers 
can see very easily what they can do to extend upon it. So I think this is this can really be a killer feature for new contributors because if you just can create a plugin within seconds, that's a very uh, very easy flow to get started actually. So I'm very, very excited about that feature specifically. Um, then what does the marketplace mean for hosting providers? Because I heard some people say, like, oh, it's kind of scary that people can start installing plugins all over the place. Uh, others are a bit more enthusiastic and just say this is a great opportunity. Um, I think the truth is somewhere in the middle. Um, like having the ability to get so many plugins onto mod uh, is pretty exciting, I think, in general. And the thing is, for hosting providers, you will be able to actually provide a list of plugins that you want your customers to be able to install. Um, so like I just mentioned, you can work with an allow, allow list or a book list. Sorry for the microphone. <laughs> um, you can also add additional USBs because if you have a plugin that only works for your customer, it could, I mean, it's not really the, the open source mindset, but I can imagine that if you want to add some features for your customer specifically, you could do that now. Um, I mean, you could already create the plugins, but you know, the end users wouldn't be able to discover them in the marketplace. And you can also work with a private plugin catalog. And now this one is very interesting. This package is open source, it's publicly available but they also have a commercial offering to create a private packages, uh, basically repository. So there you would be able to put plugins for your customers, even for a simple specific customer, and have a very smooth flow of installation and updates. So those are the most important uh, things for hosting providers. And now what is next? Because uh, this has been a long time coming, I know there's a lot of excitement about this because it hopefully will unlock a lot of potential opportunity for the whole ecosystem. So this is a rough timeline. Um, we're planning to release the first version at the end of this month, actually, November 29th. Um, we do have we do need to have everything tested before we can merge it into the community. So if you have some capacity, please join us to test it, and uh, we can actually release it then. Um, we're going to launch it as beta, so we're really going to put a label on it. Like, this is a new thing, uh, we can't guarantee everything is very stable. So, I do expect quite some uh, not bugs, but like ideas and uh, iterations to come in before we go to stable, which is scheduled for February next year. So, hopefully, when we launch the beta, we can work through all those issues and then get to a stable state in February. They will also give uh, plugin developers some time to prepare their plugins for the marketplace, especially like mostly for Mod 4, but it will automatically make it compatible with the marketplace as well. Um, and then after that, we're literally just going to iterate and improve. We're just going to launch the first version officially, and then I can imagine just so many new ideas uh, coming in. So let's see where we get from there. Right? This, uh, I think there's a lot of uh, opportunity for this. Like I can imagine some people want to offer paid plugins, um, we want to, maybe want to improve the UI at some point, have automatic updates of plugins, there's so many things uh, we can work on. So, uh, yeah, more contributors means faster iteration, right? So the more people we have to help us, to actually make this a success, the better. Um, so once again, if you know people in your company, in your network, then please uh, have them join the community. Great. So there's a few practicalities we're still working on to actually make this happen. Uh, we're still discussing how exactly we're going to set up the allow list to make sure that we only have a specific set of plugins right from the beginning. We also want to have proper documentation for end users, for plugin developers, and for hosting providers. This is going to be critical for people to have smooth onboarding onto the marketplace. And we want to ensure that everything is compatible with Modic's update system as well. Like you don't want to update Modic and then suddenly all your plugins are gone. So we're really looking into that as well. Um, and then lastly, the plugin updates to the marketplace. That would be very, very good to have. That you literally can click a single button and update your plugins, just like you can add, update apps on your phone. And then ideally, we would add automatic updates as well, like I just mentioned. Um, I think this will come after the first release, but um, it's something where we're working on as well. 
So yeah, that's it. Actually, uh, I'm pretty excited that this is finally happening. And uh, yeah, we cannot wait to see what you're going to build. There's, I think we've seen like, a lot of you great use cases today already. And uh, there's going to be so many more in the future. So we're only just getting started. So um, do you have any questions or feedback already? Bring it on. Thank you for continuing on, on this initiative. Thank you for initiating. <laughs> it's great work. Uh, so I have several questions. Uh, one is, uh, do, did you uh, plan to also include uh, plugin updates in this version, or is it uh, in the future? Mm, good question. I think we could make it happen in this version, because it's not too difficult, but we need to have the capacity do it because we also still need to write like an automated test for the documentation, still quite a lot of things to do. Um, it would be good to squeeze it in because nowadays we also don't have like a possibility to update plugins easily. Yeah, let's see if we can make it happen. Right. I'm, I'm always up for a challenge, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> right. we, can, we can talk about it tomorrow. Um, and sure. and um, about the allowables mm -hmm. that mean there is extra step for the developers to get their plugin in the marketplace? For now, yes. So I think what it would look like is a basic form where they can put a link to their Git repository. And then we'll just have a quick look to see if uh, we can actually install it properly without the version modding, see if there's no like real obvious security issues or things like that. Um, let's hope we're not going to get like dozens of submissions, because that's going to be challenging. Um, so yeah, we're starting very basic in that sense. Right, right. And do we have some like a working group that will take care of that? Not like a dedicated working group? We've been discussing it in the core team, right? Yeah. I think there would have to be like a marketplace working group or something comprised of developers and marketers who can work together. Great work, indeed. I think it was already said. Uh, some questions about um, security. So I know also in the digital world, they're trying to do these automatic updates into ups and downs, and it's not easy. Um, how do you guarantee in this system actually that what is being installed is the the right code? As in, how do you prevent uh, something from in the middle to mm -hmm. come in between? In the Drupal world, they try to solve that by implementing their own signature stuff, and I think that's why it's taking a very, very long time. Right. Um, did you think of this here as well, or are we solely relying on the, the packages system to be verifying integrity? Yes, we're currently just relying on Composer and packages for that. I think I actually don't know if um, if packages stop doing things like. Uh, validating a checksum or something when it installs a composure package? It's a good question. The only thing yeah. what I was concerned about is that imagine you do automatic updates, um, a certain plugin gets really popular, it somehow gets taken over, and then suddenly it takes over all the modics in the world. Yeah, basically supply chain. Yes, so we do have to be careful, I think, um, in saying, okay, this release is validated or something with two or three people, and we then gets added to the allow list also for updates and not only for the plugin itself. Yeah, I think that will be a good starting point. I know within WordPress they have some sort of validation for, like, we know it works with the current version. Right, but still it's still solved there somehow. Uh, yeah, but I think they also don't do any checks in terms of security. Like, sure, it could happen that the plugin developer pushes something to packages and then someone gets their credentials and they push a malicious version of the packages. That's what you mean, right? Then yeah, maybe I'm not too pessimistic. Yeah? <laughs> That's possible. I think in terms of security, I'm too pessimistic. Yeah. Maybe another question. Um, so in regards of updates right now, the, the console command to update Matic uh, takes in the zip file and does a update. Um, is there then indeed an issue to transform that completely towards the Composer flow? Ideally, yes. 
Um, that's one of the things I mentioned with the practical things we're still working on to ensure it works with the update system. Because, for example, we're also not including a component.json file with modeling itself currently, if I remember correctly. Um, so those are things we still need to look into as well. Thanks. Joey, are you still counting your steps today or not? Yeah. <laughs> he's completing his 10,000. So thanks. That's when I started with Mautic, I thought, why isn't this there? <laughs> so I think that's going to be a lot of businesses evolving around this, or I hope so. Um, are the existing plugins, so there are like, I don't know, 13 or 15 plugins pre installed in Mautic, are they listed in the marketplace afterwards as well? As they are. Yeah, they so are. you can remove them from there, or like, because I think you really think it's remove them. I haven't tried it actually. Yes, uh, so I think it's, it's, it's very good to have the, the instance as lean as possible mm -hmm. from the beginning and only install. I mean, that in WordPress, you say basically the same. You shouldn't have anything installed because of security reasons and because of having too much load on the back. Um, you shouldn't have anything installed what you actually don't need. And um, yeah. actually, it's a bit of this, it's a discussion that we we've been having for quite a while because it's always a consideration like what are the features you want to include with Monic itself versus what should be something I can install through a plugin. So we did decide to leave a bunch of plugins in there. They actually live in Monic's code code base as well. So we might want to change it in the future, but it will also make it. A bit more difficult to maintain them because not all test suit runs against the, those plugins as well. So we know that everything keeps working. As you can see here, there is a remove button. So theoretically, you could remove a plugin that is one of the monic. Don't do it. Then I guess. I guess. I guess. It would break. Really? Monty, <laughs> Monty would break if I remove the Gmail plugin or something. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's too yeah. too tightly coupled to Monic itself. That's something we need to take. Yeah, I, I try that to you know, our biggest client. Yeah. Just I think Ruth wants to say something about the roadmap as well. Nice. Yeah, so there's been a lot of work going on under the hood, so to speak, that you won't have noticed unless you are active in the Composer channel. But um, what we've been doing is the plugins are all physically decoupled from Mautic and they have their own repositories, but the code still sits within Mautic. Mm -hmm. So that's like phase one. Phase two is marketplace. Phase three is we actually pull all of the plugins out of Mautic. This is probably not to Mautic 5, at the earliest. And enable you when you install to say, I want to install these selected plugins, basically. So you install Mautic core the absolute basic functionality and some of the plugins may be mandatory but then because we have the marketplace during the installation process you could select other things that you want to install and then install them as part of the installation process so that's sort of like it's been a very very long journey to get to that point but that's sort of where we're going in the long term but it required so much of this underlying technology like this and Composer and so many of them were dependent on other things that it's been quite a challenge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, also, thank you for my side. I'm so happy to, to see this happen in the hour and make the progress. Um, do you have like a, like a backlog or other like? I mean, you already said there's a thousand ideas coming up now. You have many. You heard you have many. And you ask the people to tell them more to tell you more. Do you have a backlog where I can see what's already out there, so I don't have to bother you with the same thing again? Or? Not yet. There is actually a forum thread where we can start discussing this. Um, so I just opened it yesterday. 
So here we can start discussing things and then we can create a backlog from there. Because I think now is the time to like start putting in all those different ideas. Yep. Um, we need to check if we want to do this mainly on the forums uh, or on Jira, because then we can link everything together as well. Yep. So uh, let's see from here. Any more questions? I have one, two actually. The one is uh, regarding the download count. Is that coming from package list? Yes. And it's like manipulatable? Like, can you? <laughs> Potentially, you could try. You could try to like download some different composer a thousand times to see if it increases the download count. Yeah. I haven't tried it. Because Sorry. you want to be first in the marketplace, I guess, right? Not Probably. me, but you know someone who is making plugins, yeah? So. Right. Actually, currently we're not. I think we're not looking at the amount of downloads in the list, right? Of the plugins. It's just a random list. So it's not it's not that the plugin with the most downloads get first. Because I think people who used to WordPress will look at the number, you know. Yeah. And the stores as well, right? The different readings. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's something that Composer doesn't offer, so we would need to set up something for ourselves. Uh, which is possible, but it also means that's an additional maintenance burden, so something we need to consider. It would be great to have, actually. Okay, the other question is, uh, when you install a plugin, sometimes they also create new tables in your database. When you remove, are these deleted? Or they stay there? By default, no. And that's also not the case in WordPress, because let's say if you need to delete a plugin before you do an upgrade, and then you reinstall it after that, you don't want all your data to be gone. Um, so the short answer is no. I think there are ways to actually in your plugin have some feature to delete the data as soon as the plugin is deactivated. Um, but by default, anyone? Uh, and it comes to migrations. Is it already implemented? That when I create a new plugin, I can add uh, arbitrary number of uh, migrations. There is already some functionality for migrations in the plugin system in Modic. Um, I think it runs as soon as the plugin is enabled, but I'm not sure how it would work with the update process in the marketplace yet. You all need to check that. I think there is some hope for it, like on the plugin update or something, but we need to make sure that it actually triggers. When you I'll check that. Thanks. Okay, thank you so much. One more time, Dennis. It's an amazing uh, step forward, and I think it also will help the, the business environment around Maltic.